All right, I want to do a quick review of the Google app, the photography app. So this app has an astrophotography mode, and I'm not sure if this is just on the pixels or if this is on several different ones, but it's right here. It's called, so this would be like normal camera when you turn your camera on. And then that is night side mode right there. Okay, let me show you real quick the camera app here. All right, so it's this one right here. If you zoom in, right there. And you can find that in the App Store. You should just be able to look it up. I'll try to post that later. But anyway, we are out looking at Neowise Comet, and I've been taking several pictures, but it's starting to, we're starting to lose some of the light. And we're also getting a lot of, if you look over there, let's see if you can even zoom in here. We're starting to get a lot of uh, kind of that haze from the city lights catching the dust in the air. And so it's still been working pretty well. But I want to show you this. So anyway, you got it on regular camera. It even says try night sight mode. But if you just scroll down here, right there. And here's one little trick I just figured out because I was having trouble with them staying focused. So what it will do is it goes night sight mode and see how it says astrophotography on. After a minute, we'll recognize that it's dark enough outside and we'll go full on astrophotography mode, which is like a minute and change. So then what we want to do is if you hit this menu arrow right here, a little trick to this, i got tons of cars coming by right now, I don't know what the deal is. Uh, it's on auto focus right now and then you can go to near focus, which we don't want, we want far. So notice how it says that, okay? So now what I do, I'm going to line it up, I know it's about right there. I have a little tripod. I'll try to show you this later in some light, but uh, I have it on a little tripod. You're going to want a tripod or maybe set up against something that's going to stay stable. Otherwise, this is not going to turn out right. So what I do is I typically tip, touch something far out, like we're going to use those lights clear out in the distance to put, you know, just to double check the focus and put it in what we call like infinity mode on focus, all right? And one more car coming by here. And then what we're going to do is, so see how it says astrophotography on. I think we've got a window here with no car. So then I just go ahead, I try not to touch the car. It's going to bump it a little bit. And this, it's a smart computer. The AI will figure this out a little bit and line it up. So after about three or four seconds, it's going to kind of give you an idea what it's looking like. You can already see, I'll zoom in a little bit here. You can see Neo Eyes right there. So we're gonna let this go through its whole cycle there. So I'll shift this over just a little bit and do another one and maybe even zoom in a little bit. So the big kicker here is you gotta wait a minute, which kinda sucks. Again, this is what we're shooting toward. It's pretty dark out here too, like it's, it's getting dark. Sun went down, it's probably, I think last time I checked it was a little past 11. And this is Mountain Standard Time, and I'm in Idaho Falls, Idaho, so that kind of gives you an idea. Elevation and whatnot, it's about it's between four and 5,000 feet. Okay, so it's almost done here. I'll show you our final product. We're gonna get, because of that, you can see kind of the what it's doing here. That's all the light from the city picking it up. So I took some earlier that turned out a lot better. This should still turn out pretty good. So then it gets to there, and then we can review it here. And then it just does like, it'll do some smart stuff here and clean up that picture some. And it's gonna stack, from what I understand, it even takes a bunch of little pictures and then stacks them. So now look how good that turned out. And I'll post some pictures of this too, but like it turned out great. You know, city should be a little blurred probably, and that's good. But that comet looks pretty dang good. And if you look at some of the stars, pretty round. I mean, they're not perfect, but this app works really well. So if you're trying to get a picture of this comet and you have an Android phone, I would go download it. I think, don't quote me on this, I think it's available on all Android phones. My brother did it on his phone. He's got a Samsung phone and it works on that. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit and we're even gonna zoom in a little bit because I want a little closer picture. That's why I found it. it even works with some zoom to it. So we'll go to like, I want a little of that city in the background still. So almost 2.3 ish and again I'm just gonna make sure it focuses on something here now let's give that a shot and like I said after about a minute or after about three to four seconds you'll have a pretty good idea if it's gonna turn out oh that looks pretty cool 
should have been a hair over to the left, but actually it kind of like the offset look. So if you can see it there, there's the comet. Like I said, it will actually clean this picture up. The AI that Google has is pretty dang impressive. I'm going to turn on, try a Milky Way shot behind us too and see if we can pull that up pretty good. But this thing actually surprisingly works really well. So I recommend it, especially if you're trying to get a picture of this comet and you don't have a real nice camera or anything, it works great. So you can get a little keepsake of a photo. Got 20 more seconds here. See how it says capturing more light. So it's just gonna sit there and stack and capture and do whatever it does. I don't know, you know, the algorithm that it runs or or anything, but it works. And it, it works really well. Like I'm super impressed with it. Okay, and then we'll take a look at this again here. Alright, so So now it's oh, looks like it's already processed it. I mean, you can't really complain about that. I mean, is it perfect? No. But honestly, that's a pretty sick pick. So I got this, some city lights in the background, and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to do, just show you here real quick too, just on the wire. I'm going to flip this around. I'm just doing this on top of my van. You can't really see it on the camera, but the Milky Way is coming up really good over there. In fact, we even want, you can see Jupiter between the trees here. Zoom out. Bright spot there is Jupiter, and we're going to use that as our focus point. I'm going to zoom back, though. Let's see if we can get it to... Okay. So, let me just double check, make sure we're still, yep, still far. Okay. I'm going to turn this just a hair. And now we're going to try it. So we should see here pretty quick if the focus, yep, the focus looks decent. And it's going to look a little pixelated probably at first. You can start to see some of that Milky Way cloud there. But it should clean that up pretty good. And I got some kind of cool trees there, like I said. I mean, Jupiter may move a little bit here. So it might be a little funky through those trees, but it's actually looking pretty sick. Especially once it finishes here. So I guess moral of the story is this astrophotography app is no joke. It's pretty cool. I'm super impressed. Uh, grateful for Google for putting it out. I think uh, the iPhone does some similar low light stuff, but uh, I don't know if it has full fledged astrophotography mode, but he took some pictures. That's the one that just did it, but he took some pictures with his iPhone that were pretty low light up here earlier. I let him use my tripod. He came up and they turned out pretty good. All right, so now let's see what the final product looks like. It's a little grainy. I need to clean my lens a little bit. It's picking up some. Okay, so it darkened it up some. Actually, that looks pretty cool. It's still a little grainy. But you can see, that is pretty dang cool for... it. What, what I notice it does a little bit is it maybe softens it just a little too much. All right, let's find Jupiter again. All right, let's do one more here. Uh, we might have a car coming. We'll see how this one does. But it does kind of soften the edges of the hair. I don't know a way to change that, but honestly, like I said, for just taking your phone with you if you're out camping or hiking and you want to get some cool pictures of uh, of the Milky Way or some other astrophotography stuff, you can get some basic stuff with this. You can zoom a little bit. It's not going to be, like, amazing. I haven't really been able to, like, develop the, uh, pull the moons of Jupiter out or anything like that. But uh, it's still pretty sick. I'll do, like I said, we'll do this one more here and see how this one turns out. This one may be worse. I think those trees in front of me, I think it's trying to focus on those a little bit. Really want Jupiter to come up a little bit more. And you can stop it anywhere in there and it's supposed to still kind of give you what it has, but I think just bumping it and stuff is probably not what you want to do.
Still processing. It's going to clean that up probably just a little bit. Look at that. That looks pretty dang cool. Like honestly, it darkened up the, you can see it darkened up the trees and really popped that background. I mean, you can't complain. Oh, hold on. Like you said, you'll see as you zoom in, it definitely softens up the stars a little bit in the Milky Way, but like, that's pretty dang legit. So, anyway, check it out.